Okay, guys, we're recording. Look, right off the bat, we've got not one, but two emails regarding Josh, the gentleman who we whose dating profile we had on the show. Is last. one from Josh? One's from Josh. So is he... Conf- All right, I won't ask anything. Okay, great. Jamie's yeah. given us the opposite of drone footage right now. For her yeah. angle for her. It doesn't get any lower. <laughs> this is how Jack sees me all the time. Exactly. You're like what yeah. the Japanese you know what? people go, see in I'm Godzilla. Gonna, I'm going to lay down on my tummy until my back hurts right now and do it like this. You look like, you look like, like one of those, a teenage girl. You know those creepy oh, guys who had cameras on their shoes and would stick them under girls' skirts and take mm-hmm. pictures? That's like what you had going on. That's what I'm going for. Mm-hmm. It, it looks like you're starting to get more comfortable in your closet. Uh, you've you've decided that you're gonna like not fight against it in a way where um now you're just made kind of made peace with it. I'm sorry. Go ahead, finish. Yeah. Well, Cutter just wrote, "I need <laughs> to get in the closet." Okay. I need. Have you started? I need clothes. I said you're not in camera view. You good? I absolutely have an email for Cutter as well. Um. <laughs> so, so all of us kind of have something here we can read. But should we start with Josh? <laughs> From yeah. uh, last pod. Okay. Yeah, so we, I, like, said no. I like how Cutter has more respect for this pod than any of us. He's like, I want to come in there, but did you start yet? Right. And they're like, Very what a, nice. Fit. What a sweetheart. Um, by the way, if you're watching this, we have a uh, guest coming in about halfway. It's Kelsey wow. Ayer of Local Natives and Jaws of Love. One of my favorite uh, bands. I've seen them live a bunch of times. I'm so excited to have Kelsey on the pod. Just want to let you know, in case you're here and you're watching this on YouTube and you're just here for Kelsey, to skip uh, about halfway through the pod, he should he should be there. Uh, this is yeah, just this is just this. the us Cutter, portion. Do you, do you know the local natives? Do you know that band? <laughs> <laughs> the disrespect. I'm offended. That I hope the fans did fast forward when you said to. I hope no local that. natives fans <laughs> were around for that. If we're not if we're not in the top Yay! ten of iTunes this week, uh, we never will be. You'll never get to hear. Cutter will never talk on this pod, but he'll fart. Wow, Jesus! He's not really Christ. a farter either, and that was on command, guys. You looked at me and meant it. You're lucky, Kelsey's cool as shit because this wouldn't fly. What if we had like a maestro on here from the Philharmonic or something? You know, no, because that would happen. <laughs> what if it was the UFO guy? <laughs> oh, Ali, 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 Ali Well, I've already insulted him for it. <laughs> I like how we say we insulted him, but we like didn't really. All you know, you just Cassim, stop laughing. I've watched it. Back. <laughs> like I don't watch much of this podcast back besides the Instagram clips. And I watched that one back because I just needed to know if this was in my head. Was I that bad? Uh, I was that bad. Uh, I had the I, giggles so bad. You had the I giggles, tried. but I, I don't think you were being like rude towards him. You just no, had, but it's so I think rude. I if somebody it up for you, Jamie, you tried. Right. If I, yeah. and the problem was when I looked at Rob, then I was just done. But if I went on a podcast of three people that I did not know at all, and he's one started hysterical laughing like five minutes in and couldn't stop, I'd be like, what did I, what is going on? Oh, I have I to was, challenge your recollection. I believe it was not five minutes in. I believe it was instantly. As soon as he popped on the, <laughs> I think we were potting and he popped on the screen and you lost it. <laughs> you guys showed no sort of like, this is the entire reason why UFOs are still a mystery to us. Because anytime anyone starts to talk about it and give you some answers, people all, oh, they just stop. They stop listening and they start laughing. Do you know what I mean? Well, he came with answers and we could, we don't, you don't remember any of the stuff he talked about, right? You don't. I do. Tic Tacs, Tic Tac film. That, okay. Come on. That was that, good. That's something. Yeah, that's yeah. something. He facts. Didn't, I'm he bringing didn't facts. Really, honestly, he didn't give up anything. Like, no, there was, <laughs> oh, now, now you're going after him. Before yeah, he was like you Google. Google. Now I'm, you're st- I'm not saying he was worthy of me laughing in his face, but he didn't really give any. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, he was basically, I think he was unprepared and he just Googled UFOs right before he came on no, the pod and just gave us God, the I'm not having page. this. I'm not having this. Ali, Ali, Alejandro Rojas is a, a, a big name in the ufology field, okay? I don't want to I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen one day. UFOs are going to come and they're going to say we're letting some people on, we're not. And Alexandra Rojas is going to be at the door with the rope like a club. 
and he's gonna let Casim in, and then right. me and you, he's gonna go. No, no, he's gonna be like Rob. You said Tic Tac. You're in, Jamie. Sorry. Better luck next I time. I think I could get in. <laughs> okay. Okay. What are you gonna all do? Right. You, but you'd be like, I know Alexander Rojas, and then they would look. His at name Alexander is. Rojas there's a, They would say his name is Alejandro. You fail again. That's, <laughs> what, that's what they would say. Yeah. Well, this is America, pal. You guys look what I'm wearing for old times' sake. Oh, uh, our old yeah. sweatshop. It wow. says Mrs. Dykstra, huh? Our old sweatshop bows. This yeah, pod man, you... has gone through so many. Uh, what do you call it? Remember, we used to have rainbow rugs. Now you just have all my shoes. Just chapters, epochs. Uh, we've gone through all sorts of phases. It's another uh, word for phases. I'm looking for like. Uh, yeah, we. But between the three of us, we don't have the vocabulary. Okay, Ooh, incarnation. Incarnations. Yeah, we got one. All right, you made up for everything you just said, Jamie. Welcome back. I like back. your sweater. Thank you. Yeah, this is. Stand it's up. getting cooler. It's it's getting cooler out here. Show it to me. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Remember I stole your North Face for a little while? Uh, and yeah, I got and then you bought me one. But I didn't take it. I gave it back to you. No, no, you bought me one. You bought me a different well, color one for one. Christmas. Did and guess, like who, guess who took that in the breakup? <laughs> which one? She took the one that you gave me. No, oh, the which white breakup, one. she's saying. Oh, the last one. <laughs> Shank, you can email her. Shank Wait, is on. Shank took your... The, to be fair, she wore it more than me. I think she, it looked oh, great on her. Oh, you didn't like it. No, no, no. I did like it, but I already had my brown one. So I, if I'm going to... Yours gonna, is blue, the one I got you? No, it was white. 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 Oh. It's, please. I did like it. I just didn't want to be any... That guy is like, hey, you can't have that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be that guy. In the I think we're starting well, to Well, you could have. You could have been like, that's... Jamie gave me that. What we're doing right now is we're starting a pod war. It's our pod against that pod. We want the sweater. Do you think back. I should reach? Do you think I should reach back out to her and say no? Because clearly you didn't want it. I, I think we let the it. people reach out. The guys, you did know I do where bad? To find... Was this a social faux pas that I made? Jamie guys, got me a gift. You know and then where to I find let my Sarah ex Wine Shank. You know, you know where to where find, find her. She's very public. She's out there. I guys. love Sarah. I'll DM her myself. Okay. Think, and, Jamie, and what would you hash, say? What's the hashtag? Give back the sweater. I'm going to get, no, I'm going to say, Hey girl, remember, you know, that North face that you took from Cass. I happened to get him that for, was it your birthday Christmas. or Christmas? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> let me know how it went down. Did he just give it to you right off the bat? Like, did he wear it sometimes and you knew where I need the I need the fucking I'll speak. give you the facts that she wore it most of the time because it was it like looked, you know, it looked good on her. She had she she liked to be cozy. You know, if you know Shank, you know, cozy's at the top of her list. Right. That's and that's that, that's why you like both of us. Maybe that's your thing. Cozy people. Absolutely. The most cozy. Jamie. Coziest. Too. Yeah, um, pretty okay. cozy, you guys. Let me get into this email from Josh, right. can we? All right, we got a guest want, in. I, I would in like your minutes. your guys' opinions on the big uh, poker cheating scandal that's going on in the poker community. What's happening? There was a hand that the basically the greatest cash game, arguably the greatest cash game player right now, played against a woman who. You know, some people, she says she's been playing poker for years, other people, but then also people, she's saying she doesn't, she's still a beginner in this, but basically she played a hand with him that nobody would ever, ever, ever play. She beat him in that hand. And then when asked to explain by him, her explanation was terrible and made absolutely no sense. And the whole poker world is saying that she, or at least half of the poker world is saying that she was definitely cheating, getting some sort of transmissions in her body whether she was wearing a ring or she had some kind of thing in her pocket or this whatever is a televised was. game it's a televised game is it live so like yes or is it because sometimes those things are on a delay right for that reason it's on a delay but you can there are ways to read the cards where people can get into the software and be able to let her know it's happened once before oh this was okay they weren't playing at a table they were playing online in no a, in a, they're in playing a at a live game like an app no. No, they're playing at a live table at a casino, and it is being recorded. But what happens? And happened, you only pay with how many? How many decks do you play with? One deck, but there used to be a thing where you show your cards to a camera, and that's how they know what cards you have. But instead, what they started doing is, it's a RFID or RFID, oh, yeah. RFID, RFID, ID. RFID, and yeah. you you put your cards on the table, and it can read it because I guess there's chips in the cards. Oh, okay, but those things. Are, you can steal like out of the air that information. 
Exactly. So they're like saying credit card somebody, scammers and skimmers use a similar sort of technology. Right. So people oh, are saying, and uh-huh. like, it's so crazy because usually like, you know, it's very like, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. But what happened, uh, uh, my point is a lot of, it's very 50, 50. Like some people are like, there's no way she's cheating. What are you talking about? And then some people are like, she's a hundred percent cheating. But the guy who's like the greatest poker player in the world, one of them arguably, and he's such a like stand up guy, like amazing for the poker community, such a good dude, always does the right thing, like beyond what's necessary. And basically he was like so shocked after the hand, asked her for an explanation. She couldn't explain it, which some people are saying that's because she's so bad at poker, but it doesn't really make sense. Then he went outside and took, spoke to the people who run the show and said, hey, I think th- there's some cheating going on here and blah, blah, blah. So they asked her to come out and talk to him. And she said, he said to her basically like you, he was a hundred percent. He believed it. So he said, you know what you did. There's uh, millions of people are going to watch this and they're all going to be talking about this. And you know, you're, you just cheated me. Like, you know, you're cheating. I don't know how, but you know, you're cheating. So she said, well, um, how, how could I make it uh, better or whatever? And I don't, I think he suggested giving the money back. She walked into the room grabbed $130,000 off of her stack and went outside and gave it to him and was like, okay, here, if this will make you happy, which everyone is saying like, why the hell would she do that if she wasn't cheating? Cause no one ever gives money back from a poker hand, but other people are saying she felt pressured to do it. It's, it's crazy what's going on in the poker world right now. It's probably the biggest thing in the poker world. This is like your don't worry, darling. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it's just crazy. And it's it's crazy because every day, like I I'm changing. At first I was like, uh I, I just keep changing. I remember being like 50 50, then I was like 75 25. Has she ever I'm played? Like, you said she'd never played before? Or they had she showed like- her on this show playing like two times. She had played a bunch, but the problem is when she ex- so her history is she's been playing for over a year. She's been in the World Series of Poker Tournaments, this and that. She's had poker coaches who are like yes i coached her in this many sessions and this but then when the garrett the poker player says to her hey explain how you called with that hand like there's no way unless you were seeing my cards and she gives an explanation that makes no sense right right like like you would be like what i would say if i called on a crazy hand not only that then later she changes her explanation okay so all right so is there any like thought that they're going to investigate and maybe uncover some sort of like uh like crazy futuristic method of of cheating here is that 100 percent? yeah they're just it's only day five now so now it's all speculation but like how how do they how do they do that if they don't have it like in the moment like it's happening you know she doesn't have anything on her they can't check right like they assume that she was receiving an impulse from someone who was stealing the information like hacking it yeah there are videos where it's like what's this thing in her pocket and everyone's like that's her phone and it's like no you're not allowed to bring phones into the room they take everyone's phone okay so she had something in there but people people some people were like no that's nothing in her pocket that's it it's all like everything is being said and some like there's genius people in the poker world who are like of course she's not cheating she just didn't know what was going on she got nervous and she did whatever and then other people are like how how could there be any way in the world not cheating so She could have been just nervous having to explain something. This is what some people say. Now, Jamie, here's the part where it gets crazy, where I think you'd be like, what? The guy is outside, and and when she comes out and gives him the 130,000, he comes back into the room. Out of of how much, by the way? It was 130,000 that he lost, and she gave back every penny. Okay. So he had like 700,000 in front of him, but she had 130, and when when he went all in, she called- they, he gives her 130 because that's what she had. And then he just, she just said, yeah, sure, I'll give it back to you. She gives it back to him, a player who's at this table, who they said later was her business partner, that other people said she was dating. But then her husband said, no, that's not. But people were like, no, we know they're dating. Jamie, it's so crazy. But here's the crazy part. He sees her give the money back and he starts flipping out. He's like, you fucking pussy, you fucking piece of shit. You're making the girl give the fucking money back. You fucking sore loser. Did like wanted to fight this guy. So now the other guy leaves the game. Like it was 
And it's all on live stream. And the best is like, there's an announcer of this whole thing. And he's like, oh, I don't really know what's going on here. <laughs> like, it was. I feel like I need to watch what happened like live and like read the people's energies. You know, mm. I need to get like, mm -hmm. I need to put my like. Yeah, you don't have the Jamie full goggles story. On. Yeah, you need I'll to send it to it you. Out. I'll send it to you. Okay. And I'll send you like the shortest version with somebody saying like, here's what happened. This is it. And okay, you can see perfect. It. This is it, man. Thank you. Hey, uh, guys, before we get back to the pod and our guest, let's talk about one of our sponsors in today's episode, which is BetterHelp.com. For those of you that have always thought about doing talk therapy but never knew how to go about it, had to find somebody who was talking to a therapist, ask them if they recommended them, get some weird sort of like audition into like what it would be to become a customer of theirs. Forget about all that. Now it's time that you sign up for BetterUp.com. There's an app where you sign up, and within 48 hours, you're matched with a licensed therapist that you have access to all week. You can message them any time of the week. You have access to them. Uh, they will respond whenever they can. And then on top of that, you also have your weekly one-on-one -on -one with them. They have different therapists for different issues. So if you want to uh, you know, talk about like, uh, a more specific thing like how to get over a uh, morning a loss or maybe how you should be uh, talking to someone about maybe a career prep. There's all sorts of different therapists that are available to you at a fraction of the price uh, as regular talk therapy would be. So why don't you do yourself a favor? It's better to be a problem solver. Therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash pajama today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash pajama and start talking to someone today. Can we talk about notifications for a second? Who actually leaves those sounds on anymore? Well, besides that kind. That's another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. We've talked about Shopify before. They make it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. So whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes, you can start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. You can create the online store, you can discover new customers, grow your following, and you will keep them coming back. They have all their sales channels sorted so your business can keep growing from in-person POS systems to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social medias like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. They also have 24-7 support, libraries full of educational content. Shopify has got your back every step of the way. So sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash pajama all lowercase. So go to shopify.com slash pajama to start selling online today. Again, that is shopify.com slash pajama. I'm enthralled. It's just like when Gabby Petito was killed last year and I was just glued. By I the way, the Lifetime movie that came out, I got to watch it. What? Gabby I Petito. <laughs> I know who that is. But you were like, you were like really into that. Oh, yeah. Look, his Kasim loves like white victim stories, you know. Oh, yeah. You should watch Big Sky. This is like Big Sky. Uh, what what channel and time would I find that? <laughs> ABC Wednesdays at ten nine Central or on Hulu. All right, check out our girl Jamie on Big Sky, everyone. You want me to read this email now? Yeah, sorry. You, I actually thought that that would be like a one liner that you guys would like roll your eyes and we'd keep going. I didn't think you'd actually want to hear about that. No, you never know, Jamie's. Yeah, you never know. You just, we, I didn't, if you were going to say she was going to be on her belly on the floor of her closet doing this pod, I would have just, I would have said I had no, no way. I'm going to have to change my position at some point because my back's going to start hurting. Let us know. Do whatever you got to do, Jamie. Right, well, you, by the way, you sound great in this, uh, in the closet. I yeah. know. That's why I keep doing it. You do, you do sound good. Okay. Let me get to this email because we have. 15 minutes here. This is from Josh, the guy who sent us his dating app last time. He said, Hey, PJ pants fam, long time listener, second time emailer. You guys did a deep dive on my Bumble profile this week. And I've got to say that the criticism was tough, but fair. I'm here to provide some clarity on all the mystery surrounding my profile. <laughs> <laughs> first things Big first. Fans of you, Josh. Love you. First things first. I'm not a pilot. I have. Ah! Oh, man. So that was just have, the best day of yeah. his life. I have a friend who's an instructor and took me up a few times because I wanted to get cool. my license soon. It's expensive as hell. I've been able to log hours in the sky and practice takeoffs for when I actually take the classes. I think this means we're kind of both right here. 
I think, t- to me, I think he's a pilot. If he's practicing I said, takeoff. I said, okay. But he's not technically a pilot, but he is on his way. He's more than just Who is? a guy. Right, which is why off. I said he should have added loves flying. Yes. Second. <laughs> that's right. Make it vague. Second, I am an actor, but what mainly pays the bills is my stand-in doubling work. Cool. Last time I emailed you guys, I mentioned that I would also sometimes work for Allison Jones as a temp casting assistant, and I do some freelance writing and modeling. Oh, is this Allison guy- Jones is a great casting director. She's she's huge. Is this yeah, the guy ahead. who wrote in like two weeks, uh, like two months into us potting? I maybe I don't some, I don't have the memory for like Disney. He, he like did tours at Disney World for people. No, uh, different guy. Well, I could go back through and figure it out, but that would require some sort of prep. And I don't do that. Lastly, I fully agree that selfies aren't the best, but I fucking hate asking people to take my picture. Either way, I'm going to be using a lot less selfies going forward after hearing Rob and Jamie's passionate <laughs> viewpoints on them. Thanks for breaking down my profile. It was hilarious and honest with some good nuggets of advice mixed in. Kasim, you've solidified my man crush after hearing all the nice things you said about me. Of course, no problem, buddy. Rob, you're an inspiration to me as a fellow former chubby kid. Jamie, I know you. Uh, I know I'm too old for you, given your track record. But, I, <laughs> but if things don't work out with Perry, then I'd love to grab a drink sometime. All jokes Sweet. aside, you guys are the best. All the love. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Now, what here's it where it gets fun. Here's where it gets fun. The second email. Okay. Well, wait, hold on. I got something to say about that. Okay. All right. The, the thing that I was going to say is, Josh, you don't ask people to take pictures of you, bud. You, you, the pictures that you take with your friends, you find one you like and you throw that up. Or And, and make sure, you know, it's not the first one. But I the, respect him for not putting like him with groups of people. But I'm saying it's, it's the first, you have to put the first picture. You have to make it clear this is me. You know what I mean? And then you could have pictures where it's like you and your dad or you and someone else. And then like, yeah, if it's four dudes who all look identical, like when there's when there's women on here who their first picture is like eight women and they're all blonde. I'm like, who? what's your problem? Like, I don't even look, try and find them anymore. Uh, I just I just let them go. Man. Swipe left. All right. OK, that's more advice. This is when, all free. Josh. When you were saying that we when you were saying that we need the the gym police, like telling people in the gym, like, hey, you can't do that. I was thinking we need dating app police. Like we need to be the dating yeah. app police where we come in and go, hey, you just did this. You're banned for a month mm. and sure. come back and fix it. Like you, your sure. profile picture can't be you and six people because I don't – what am I – now I have to go to your next picture and then go back to like what's your – how Absolutely. how does that make any sense? I think the three of us, our three sensibilities together would make the perfect police squad because we can hit it from every angle. You know and what I mean? And also be fair. Absolutely fair, but tough, but fair. Always be vague. Listen to this. This next email comes from an anonymous person. She wants to uh, remain anonymous, but she says she's dated Josh. Okay? I want you to hear this because... Gabby, don't use that face for the fucking thumbnail. Don't you fucking make make a stupid YouTube thumbnail using this face, Gabby. Don't, I don't... Don't fucking do it. I dated Josh. We're friends now. And I died laughing at your review of his profile. (laughs) He's not a pilot. He took a couple lessons. (laughs) He's a good dude, but dates multiple girls at once. And he doesn't look like that shirtless anymore. (sighs) He's a stand. And and we all fluctuate. He's a stand oh. with his mom, so that's how he's getting by. He thrives on attention and adds all the girls that he comes across on Bumble to up his follower count. And of course, shared on Instagram that you guys talked about his profile. And then the next line is about her uh, remaining anonymous. But that's geez, I thought she said she said they're friends. It doesn't sound like it. This is controversial. And by the way. If I was if this was me or you, we'd be able to figure out who this was, right? It feels like she's very comfortable in Josh not knowing that this is like like narrowing it down to who she is. Oh, she doesn't so want many. Josh to know. I she doesn't see. want Josh to know. But oh, I think Josh will be able to figure out. You think hey. so? Well, yeah, you because how long because how long has he not looked like that shirtless for? <laughs> you know, it's like he's it's it's probably only been a certain amount of time. 
the pandemic's done a lot to us. I can't. Yeah, fuck Josh that. Yet. I fluctuate daily. Here's what here's what I, I'm torn between. Right on one hand, I, our boy Josh, do we leave this in because it's kind of slandering his character and it's kind of saying some messed up stuff? On mm-hmm. the other hand, mm-hmm. I gotta say you're coming off like a heartbreaker, but I think this is a girl who has got a case of the the saddies. Yeah, you think she's she's kind of just upset at the at the way their relationship maybe ended or didn't progress and she's yeah, just her like, way oh, he getting back people for followers he doesn't look like that shirt list that and we're friends what would you say if you weren't friends by the way that's the worst way to just like up your follower account which is like flirt with people like there's a lot easier there's a lot easier ways to get your followers up you just buy them like from what india. you buy them from russia and india probably chasm flirted with like 150,000 people yeah um but okay Fun. so that's uh that's the juicy gossip that's our don't worry darling on the show um mm. i feel one. bad Do, if we we put josh's photo up and now people are going to be trashing him on here is that okay? no one's trashing no, him no one's trash- trash- he's all we did was say how hot he was who is now has love handles possibly? we don't even know if that's true <laughs> we don't even know if that's a real it could just oh, be oh you know what i i learned this and, when we started potting Say, uh, just say allegedly. Allegedly, he lives with his mother. That email okay. was allegedly. Allegedly. This one says beef with Cutter. It's a subject. Oh, wait, wait till after this fucking episode. I've been catching up on all the older episodes of Pajama Pants recently, and there was an episode where Jamie said that Cutter was getting rid of their Traeger for a green egg grill. <laughs> <laughs> And I have to say, I'm deeply hurt by this as I am a member of the Traeger family who created the grill. I'm here to inform Cutter that the Green Egg Grill will not compare as they are not the same thing. And I feel so sad for Jamie that Cutter's grilled meat will no longer taste the same. So please tell me, please tell me he kept his sanity and the Traeger sad face. Anyways, love the pod and and you all. Also, can we bring back Drea for another show, please? Much love, Jade from Oregon. Thank you, Jade. So, Jade, so the reason that we made this, that he wanted to make the switch, because he built this whole little barbecue area for himself. You guys saw it, right? Yeah. yeah. And the Traeger is just as hard to fit in the flow of things like we only have like like this little caddy corner so we could only make this little l and um so he could work in an egg better into the countertop and like the aesthetic of it so that's why he chose to do it however the meat does not taste as good at all wow wow so she's right so jade is right yeah jade if you're a member of the traeger family uh why don't you get us all a Traeger? Prove it. What's Prove incredible it to your favorite is there's, podcast. Only, there's only seven people who listen to this podcast, and somehow we're connecting all these dots on this. Uh, the girls mm. dated Josh. Someone's a Traeger family. This yeah. is amazing. Maybe there's just more like giant group listening to our pod, and so it only seems like yes, we only like have a Nielsen, few listeners. Nielsen House, where there's but perhaps a- there's like. Th- you know, a couple of hundred that get together to all listen to it together, like a like an audience. Yeah, send us just, send us on Instagram your pajama pants listening parties. Yes, it's like how people used to watch Sopranos back in the day when they would all get together exactly. on a Sunday night and eat. Absolutely, meatballs. we just we just Absolutely. do this to people, Rob. Yeah, something about when you and I are together. You know, I, uh, I just mm-hmm. uh, oh sorry, go ahead, Cass. No, go ahead. I was just gonna uh, get into last one last time. email. No, please, Robbie, come in, land that plane, deboard, gra- grab your baggage, and head out to the curb for your Uber, buddy. No, what's what's so great about pods that I'm I'm I, I went to lunch alone today. I, I never went to have sushi alone, where you like sit at the bar and you just fucking eat. And I like you just sit there, you listen to a podcast, you're eating fucking sushi. It's like this is the best life. Where'd in the you world. go? Uchi, come on. Yeah, you should try neighborhood. It's pretty good. Ugh. Jamie, I went to neighborhood. Compared to Uchi, a neighborhood is like a six. Uchi is like a nine. Well, yeah. So why would I? Why, why would but go? I still think it's pretty good. I don't think so. I think sushi bar that you he just called to, you a bitch. That's yeah, essentially what he said to you. Sushi yeah, bar, very good, Jamie. You took us to a great oh, spot. Yeah. But Uchi is up there with that neighborhood sushi. To me, is not even in the realm. Okay. 
In your, I'm saying, Jamie, <laughs> I can't always agree with you. I'm sorry. I'm sick of I, it. You can't. I understand. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Have you guys seen each other uh, yet since you, since Rob's moved? Yeah. Yeah. I went over there with my own water and I he hung did. out. Jamie, he did. are you on your phone or are you on this pod right now, no, Jamie? I'm right here. <laughs> Oh man, she's you got you're giving it to her today, Cass. Oh, uh, she's not well, she's saying, yeah, and then her eyes are over here. I know you're on your phone, Jamie. I'm no, not, I'm not. I'm not an idiot. She picks I'm her nails. Not. She picks stuff. Nothing here. I'm playing with my carpet. Yeah, she picks stuff too. Remember That's when you used to worse. pick the chair and people used to get mad? <laughs> so many something. Me, this, look this. At me. Here's a little feed for this, you. This Jamie, do not. Gabby, blur that out. We need to be paid for that. <laughs> oh, Jamie, can you do the thing that hot chicks were doing that I saw on like a video on, on I think it was a TikTok thing where they do like bunny ears behind their head. Do you know that? No. So watch, tilt, tilt your screen up a little bit so we can see the top of your head. Uh, maybe I don't think the laptop is high yeah. enough. It's it, so if you put the laptop up a little like that, if you put your feet up, it'll look like you have. Oh, uh, I don't know if I could get them up. Ugh. Where are women doing this, Rob? She's gonna yeah, break yeah. his spine, dude. <laughs> wow, Jamie, you're so sexy. This is this is what all the kids are seeing these days. You are a sex symbol, Yame. Damn. Jesus Put that Christ. on TikTok. How do you? Why do you have to pick up your leg? No, like, no, I don't no, understand. Jamie, it's the angle of the laptop. <laughs> Somehow, you're taking a sexy thing and making it so disgusting, so yeah, awkward. This, this what is, is what Jamie? Do. Look, look Jamie, at. if you did that, like if you lift the laptop a little bit so that the angle, yeah, now do it. Yeah, see, but then, yeah, yeah, now you got it, Jamie. <laughs> so sexy. Wow. Oh, oh man, this is a good pod today. <laughs> That between the farts and that, that that (laughs) closet is just full of sex. Um, All right. Before uh, we bring our guest on and take a quick break, I'm going to read one last email and then uh, we'll get to our guest. How's that sound? Great. Okay. Hey, PJs, I hope the subject line caught your attention. It says do not read. And now that you're reading this, my name is Jose um, and I don't want to say the last name. You guys literally change the podcast in my book, the podcast game in my book. You guys don't filter much and you keep it real <laughs> as fuck. Robert, After what we were just doing, he's yeah, like, he so changed good. the podcast game. <laughs> Robert has such a one of a kind, I don't give a fuck attitude with yeah. a sprinkle of care and love. Yami is the sweetest, most open minded sweetheart. Kasim, I knew nothing at all about you before this pod. And no, I didn't Google you. I let the pod play episode after episode to get to know you, and you're hilarious as F. Literally, everything you guys talk about is interesting, fascinating, and funny. This may be the point where Robert, uh, like, dude, how long has it been in this fucking email? May I ask each of you a question? I greatly appreciate it. Robert, you said uh, many times you don't have much going on, and you'll be willing to move to Houston. Can you lab? No, fuck this. This is gonna. <laughs> this is gonna take forever. There's. There's like uh, so much so more. We'll, we'll come back to then that. You're gonna have to read. answer Did it. Do you yeah, not yeah. read this before you? No, I don't. I don't read the podcast. He says no preparation. No he changed pre- the whole podcasting game, Jamie. The only thing I, see, I did. It's. I thought you. I thought you had some sort of screening process. You shouldn't be given this duty anymore. I'll do it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, a, yeah. You can't even get a table. <laughs> you're on the floor. Kelsey, welcome to the funniest woman in podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing but free time she's got. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelsey Ayer, uh, musician, songwriter, local natives, uh, Jaws of Love. Um, one of my favorite bands is is joining us tonight. Kelsey, thanks for coming. How are you? Of course. Yeah, I'm good. It's good to meet all of you. I've never met you, any of you before. Uh, you what's too. Up? Yeah, nice Hi. to meet. Thanks for coming on the pod. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming. I've only stared at you from a crowd of um like 25 to 30 year old women. And I'm just, the <laughs> you know, I'm in this crowd. I think I was the closest I've ever been was at the last show uh, in L.A. at the YouTube theater. Um, yeah, I saw some of your footage you shared yes. with me of uh, getting really up close and personal with some fans and Taylor <laughs> and everyone screaming into Taylor's mic, I think. Right. Yes. Uh, Taylor, who is the uh, other vocalist in the band, got out into the crowd and I it, it just happened to be like right in front of me. And so I was filming it for Instagram 
And I got a really great shot. Like you would think they'd want to post, put this on their fucking website or something. It was, it was <laughs> yeah. so good. And uh, afterwards, I tagged all the uh, guys in the band. And Kelsey was like, hey, dude, great footage. Like, can I can I have it? You know, and some like a couple people sent me because you reposted it. A couple people were like, hey, can I get that? I'm in that video. And um, you were very nice. And and that's kind of how we uh, started. Cool. To, so um, now he's on the pod. So look at that. Nice. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Up? Hell yeah. That's, a, that's a good <laughs> story. That's the story. That's the story of us. That's right. I yeah. love it. Yeah. You never I wish know I could be Cass. in the crowd more. I'm stuck behind a keyboard all the time. So I you've never got get a lot that. of work. Yeah. You've got to do you do quite a bit in that band. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I've got I've got double, triple duties a lot of the times. So I'm like playing keys yeah. and singing and then like playing a drum or like sampling something. Wow. Uh, the, yeah, they they gave they give me a lot of jobs, and so I got got a lot of work to do. Are yeah. you exhausted? Yes, oh, <laughs> juggling so much. <laughs> <laughs> are you exhausted after your shows, or are you? Or does it amp you up? No, no, I, I'm 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 feeling great after the shows. Right before the show, uh, I'm really used to like what kind of my role is in that band now because I'm just doing. I can do a lot of stuff, so they make me do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they put me to work. They know what this horse can do, so they're like, "Okay, all right, you know what you got to do." You gotta Smart keep going. people. I know the yeah. feeling. It's nice to feel useful, um, mm -hmm. but I gotta imagine, and you know, maybe that can lead into to Jaws of Love and how you got started with that. Um, when you're filling all those roles and you're counted on to do certain things, sometimes it it doesn't leave you with a lot of room to do the stuff that you really want to be doing. Um, but it doesn't feel like you're being inhibited in any way in local natives. But what is like Jaws of Love um, allowing you to express and giving you the room to do that you maybe can't do in local natives? Yeah, it's just it's like not better or worse. It's just different. Like with right. local natives, there's five people in the band. And like the collective voice is just all of us in, in you know, around one megaphone and and that voice is a collection of people. And then, yeah. uh, and, and it's awesome and it creates something I could never create on my own. Um, but then to have an outlet like Jaws of Love where I can really just have my own singular, singular unique voice and just say the exact thing that I'm, that I'm thinking and make the exact thing that I want to happen, happen. Uh, it's, it's, it's been really cool. I put out a solo record like in 2017 uh, and, uh, so now I've got like four, four local natives albums and two EPs. And then I've got, uh, a Jaws of Love album and EP, and I'm here to promote this new Jaws of Love album that's coming out November 11th. Oh, great. Yeah. We, um, I've been watching the, the single for five years. That's the new video that you put out. Yeah. yeah I made that with my wife. Yeah. Really? I saw, I had it's saw so that. so cool. Yeah. It's oh, on the, um, it's great. So she was filming. It's all on iPhone, right? At, from what I read, um, mm -hmm. and it's just you going down different escalators around, in and around, like what looks like I don't know Glendale or just LA, and and um, yeah, you know the whole the whole sort of song takes place going up uh, down different escalators, right? Yeah, the 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 song is kind of about building up courage to like talk to someone you haven't talked to in a long, long time, and yeah. Something about the escalators keeping going and never getting somewhere felt felt good. That was my wife's yeah. idea. Uh, where we planned poorly was we did it on Labor Day and it was 105 degrees <laughs> out. Uh, yeah. And my wife is pregnant. So uh, oh, I felt really bad, uh, really pushed her to the brink. Uh, but I mean, she's super stoked that we got to do that together. She was filming it. That's a big yeah. ask. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she she's awesome she wanted to do it and then we yeah. just were like by like uh universal city walk or something because there's some good escalators around there and she's like i need to be done this needs to be over now yeah. did you really scout all these escalators before or were you just randomly just like let's try here and see if they have one we 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 knew of a bunch of places there's a bunch of places downtown uh that have them like uh near um well there's a bank of america building and they have outside escalators the thing was it was labor day so a lot of them were shut down right uh, and we tried to go to the wilshire vermont one which is the longest escalator in in 
It's like the 46th uh, longest escalator in the world. And like, really? I needed that so bad, but we showed you up did. and like, it was like kind of shut down. I was like, fuck. So you're like, this uh, is where we could do the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you know, so funny. You said you're at city walk. Cause like in universal studios, they have like, to me, the longest escalator in the world that goes down from the top level down to the bottom level. Did you think about doing those escalators? <laughs> we, we, There's like four well, of them and they're like 10 minutes long. Yeah, but then it, you got to pay for the, parking. Is that in the, in the, in, in the, the park universal studios? Yeah. 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 yeah uh, what are you gonna I, do? I, I thought, of sorry, that, Jamie, it, I'm it was, sorry. Uh, is that upsetting you? <laughs> Jamie's it's not in the budget. It. It's not in the budget. You're I mean, right. come on. You she gotta runs buy lean and mean. And yeah, 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 yeah. She's more than the a, gorilla. It's a filming. financial hurdle. And then I'm easily distracted. You know? <laughs> I want to go on Jurassic Park. I want to go on the Simpsons yeah. ride, you know, Absolutely. and they sell and beer she, in and your wife And your wife can't go on anything. No. Because no. she's pregnant. Right. Not well, my fair. mom went on roller coasters the whole time she's pregnant. <laughs> yeah. That explains. Well, you guys seem fine. I don't know. Yeah. I just meant. I just made you brother and sister. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone always assumes. Yeah. Okay, right, 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 right. My bad. Uh, and by the way, they're <laughs> not Italian, apparently, which is like, it's crazy. Yeah, oh, wow. it's crazy. Listen, uh, we have a mutual friend in Nick Rutherford. Um, I just texted Nick before you got on. Apparently, you guys just hung out last night. Um, yeah. But I noticed, oh. you, yeah, you did some music for a comedy show that he did. Um, mm -hmm. he's also been on the pod. Um, is such a funny guy. Are you one of these musicians that like loves being around comedians and <laughs> loves, do you know what is I that mean? A thing? And comedians yeah. love being around musicians. Like there's like a trade off. There, there's, noticed. there's a symbiotic thing going on. Yeah. Uh, I love being around comedians. I love comedy. Like I want to mm. do comedy. I, I, I made a comedy fiction podcast over the, pandemic mm -hmm. uh for headgum you know that uh, yeah yeah uh company Amir and uh jake yeah. Amir's company yeah mm -hmm. and that was really fun and i What's learned that called? how niche it's called the kelsey air tv show on radio yeah uh I, I i like made a bunch of characters and we all talked to each other and i used oh, all so my fun. years of recording music to be able to do this i know like ableton so well that's like the recording software I use. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I made it. So it seemed like there's like a, a me and a bunch of friends hanging out and did like joke songs and fake commercials and skits That's and fun. stuff. You oh, I have voices? to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Here's the and thing I with local like, natives. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut oh, you off. Okay. But you guys, you guys have a very like, like cool, like East Side not serious, but like you would think it's so nice to know that you're into comedy and you can do silly things too, you know, because yeah. you guys have a, a vibe. Do you know yeah, what I mean? If yeah. I if I took over the band vibe, it would be a really different vibe. And yeah. uh they're actively trying to get me not to do that. <laughs> uh, so so everything else you see, that's that's the full vibe. This is the right. full vibe. Yeah. A, a little more playful. Um, is that anything you, you bring to Jaws of Love? Do you bring that sort of silliness to any of it? Because five years is also, I feel like, kind of like a story where you show up on the doorstep at the very end. It's kind of like, you know, it's a little more serious. It's it's about love or lost love or maybe like finding love. And, and uh, I, I, I was just I was just talking about this with somebody. It, it's 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 really weird. Like in my in my normal life, I'm kind of like uh, making jokes all the time and being silly and all this stuff. And then for my music, it goes the complete opposite way. And wow. it's very like serious. I'm really attracted to darker music, darker <clears throat> films, that kind of content. And yeah, I, I don't know. Jaws of Love is arguably like even more serious than local natives. But then like, if you see me live, I uh, really bounce back and forth, like with like banter between the songs that where I'm just going nuts and doing what saying whatever i want it's just got to be really weird because people are like feeling the music and then i'm trying to like make them laugh or something it's a, i i fun. do notice that no i've, se I, I've seen you I live and you're very funny in between the songs and oh, i think it, it works well because like we use the song as a way to sort of like get it out you know and 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 feel those 
feelings. And then mm-hmm. like my favorite song of yours is Columbia, like by far. Um, and I know that uh, that's a song about your mother. Right. And yeah. And she passed away. And like to me, it's uh, I think it's one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. I, I don't know uh-huh. if it's because of this emotion that you're bringing to it, but can you tell me a little bit like about writing that song or making that song and, and um, like what it means to you and, and uh, does, did that help with sort of like the, the grieving and the, and like the mourning and, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super curious about how that process works. Cause it's so detached from what I do. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I write about what happens to me in my life and, and it, it really is a therapeutic, amazing gift that I somehow got to be able to process whatever's going on through through writing songs and and yeah like when my mom passed away in 2011 that was obviously very earth shattering um and and yeah I, I I was really lucky to have the band as a support system I still do and uh they're they're just like buds and for, for forever forever buds and if they felt if anyone felt anything similar anything close to what i was feeling they they were feeling that and so was my wife and uh my brothers and family but uh yeah they yeah i I don't know i i i found being confessional in my in my songwriting helped me connect the songs to the audience um so much so much more so whenever i can be more vulnerable and confessional it seems like those are just songs i'm more proud of and songs I also like, just think about. like the more specific you get in your art, specifically a musician, the more universal things actually are. Like mm-hmm. when you get really specific with your vulnerability, it's way more people are going to understand it than, mm. you, re- you know, I just I just feel like that's when when people are really honest and true is when it when everybody can feel it. Yeah, it, it's like because because the more general stuff can get out to more people and be like spread out and and people can be like oh cool but like if you can tap into some some real like shit that that yeah. you're going through and and w- if people have been going through the same thing that song means like a thousand percent more than like something more yeah service level and that yeah. I feel like gets and like, even if it's not the stuff. same. And even if it's not the same specific thing, you like mm. I've I have a friend that wrote this song and it's very specifically about like an experience in her life. Yet I think it's, it's written exactly for something that happened to me that is nothing like what mm. she's singing about. You know, like she and she said she's like, I got so specific about what happened and she's, you know, and spilled her heart out. And I was like, oh, no, but that's my story. And it's probably thousands of other people's stories. So it's just really cool that music can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I almost like not knowing sometimes what songs are about. And then you just some nugget here or there of like a word or something just totally applies to something in your life. And you're like, oh, yeah. wow, that wrote that about me. How do they know? Yeah. Me? So yeah. Well. There's, there's some watching? songs where it's like everyone or, you know, most people think it's about this one thing and everyone's like, Oh my God, I relate so much. And then the person who wrote it is like, is it okay that I say that this is not at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matchbox 20. It's Rob Thomas, right? That song 3 AM. And everyone's like, Oh my God, it's 3 AM. I must be lonely. It's about, you know, when you're trying not to text the person you like when it's late and the, and he's like, Oh, it was about my mom when she was sick. Like, you know, and it has mm. nothing to do with, Wow, yeah. What yeah. Everyone thinks that, and then he was like, yeah. for a while, I didn't want to tell. Oh, sure. Well, that isn't you know. Layla like Eric Clapton's Layla like about his dog, Layla. <laughs> There's some song that's about something like that, right? Is that from uh, "Can't Hardly Wait"? Right <laughs> when they're in the car and they're talking. About, was it Layla? I, 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 I don't know. No uh, but if we're talking about Eric Clapton on here, <laughs> I, I gotta go. So thanks so much for having me, everybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it off. Up. Um, you, you know, sorry, you mentioned earlier, right? Sorry, yeah, we're you in mentioned the weeds, earlier they say. how you, um, if you were gonna take over the vibe of local natives, you would, it would be very different, and I'm, and I find that to be super interesting. How does the vibe come together? 
who does it coalesce around? Is it sort of like equal parts? All of you guys, um, how, how, how did you guys get to this sort of like serious, cool guy, uh, you know, image that I have of you in my head? Uh, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's a mix. It's just a mix of everything we, you know, can agree on and that we get really stoked on. So what you see is probably just like the, 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 the Venn diagram of what we're all, what we're all like excited about. And, and I don't mm -hmm. know what, what we want to come off as, uh, I'm sure like inspired by all these other artists who we look up to, who we think are like really cool and, and, and are doing cool things and have, we've always been pretty art and design forward because well, Matt and Ryan and Nick all, all design and all help come up with like merch stuff and have designed albums uh, like in the past. And um, yeah, I don't know. We're all, we, we all, we all love that. And I, I, I love that a lot. Um, it's just the, it's just any sort of dumbass um, fuckery that I, is my normal MO is uh, right. suppressed. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to get I would love to know more about your MO. Um and I know anyone that <laughs> okay. hangs with Rutherford is a wild is a wild cat. Um mm. yeah. Is is there one song? You guys have so many great ones and um how many albums now? Four uh, sorry, I should have looked it up. It feels like five Six? We have four. We have four, four. albums and okay. and two EPs, and, and then we're uh we're we're gonna have another one coming out soon. Yes, and by the way, the the two songs that are out for that are absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, thanks. Desert Snow and uh, another and, one. Um, uh, wait, we'll now get there. I don't know the two of is. us can get there. <laughs> the two of us can get there. Hourglass. Is there, yes, Hourglass. Yeah. Is there a song? one sign this is a tough question but that you would give to someone to be like this is who local natives is that represents us as a band better than any other song that in, that sort of represents the music that we make oh one one song that's like this is the song one person gets or, to hear to, it and you can they'll either be a fan or like this is the song that will turn them if not you know man that's so hard to say well, like I before, feel like before this pod, Kasim was like, "Hey, here's the band. Check yeah. this out." And he sent us some stuff, right? So it's I like, gave yeah. I gave him uh, before you tell him what songs I I gave them <laughs> a Jaws of Love song and a local native song, but but I don't want to influence anything here. What? But yeah, I'll tell you which ones I sent them. But those don't uh, okay. represent what I. You already know Columbia is probably my favorite yeah, right. overall. So. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, uh, also off a of hummingbird, I think uh, I think the I think it's the eleventh track on there but it's called bowery yes and okay i feel like that one is such a good encapsulation of like what we're what i feel like is our strengths uh as as a band like co collective singing and uh, mm -hmm. uh maybe more interesting like chord progressions uh epic outros we're all about the epic yes outro. you are yeah you are uh, Nick Nick always makes fun of me because I'll I'll uh, if we're playing a uh, um, like a sh a festival somewhere and we have to write lighting notes uh, for for a lighting designer to to try and help them get our show more and uh, mm -hmm. for every song at the end of the notes it's like and there's an epic outro and like <laughs> end with like an epic yeah. outro and then every song says epic outro and we're just like okay that's yeah. Funny. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's that like, should be the name of your next album. That's right. Epic outro, the band. last one. Whatever your volume whatever you're five, out your last album. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's right. Okay. Let's, let's talk now. You said you're you like sort of darker movies and sort of when it comes to like that kind of stuff. What's your what's a your favorite film? What's a band that you listen to when you just need to listen to something? Well, my my my. My go-to favorite band of all time is probably Radiohead. Mm -hmm. uh, huge, huge Radiohead fan. I think that probably comes off in like the Jaws of Love stuff. Very obsessed with them and Tom yeah. York. And uh, uh, but that a uh, favorite movie or director um, or just yeah. But if if there is a favorite movie, I'd love to hear it. Well, maybe my favorite director right now is uh, Denis Villeneuve. Mm -hmm. You know that guy? Of he, course. He did, like. 
just did Dune, Things, Cario, did and Arrival, Sicario. and uh, yeah. The new Blade Runner that I really liked watching Dune. I thought that was awesome. Dune was. Bad. I didn't know that's how you pronounce his name. I learned that at some point, but I said Dennis. I was saying it very different in my head. What is, <laughs> yeah. what, what, say say what it is. I don't even want to say. Okay. It. <laughs> Jamie, please. Uh, Dennis <laughs> Villanueva. That's what a lot of people were going, but yeah, it's Denis, right? It's Denis Villanueva. I heard that. I, I yeah, think dude. that's what it is. I, Hell yeah. It would be it hilarious if it great. was Dennis. Thank you. Thank you very mm. much. You're welcome. I my One of my favorite, favorite movies is Drive. For sure. Yeah. You, you see that one? Yeah. That one is yeah. fantastic. That's uh, Nicholas Winding Refn. Great mm-hmm. soundtrack to that, by the way. Do you get down on like the 80s synth uh music do you have like it's, it's funny i like i like that music it's not like why i love that movie right yeah and i know it, it but it's it, all over lost that their movie. shit yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah everyone yeah, loved yeah. that well it was such a vibe it was such a good it was mm-hmm. such a rad vibe but just every everything about the movie I, I i feel weird uh being so into the ultra violent uh ryan gosling elevator scene uh i uh, yeah, it's so it's so good. It's so good. I feel, <laughs> I feel bad. I feel like my bloodlust has come out or something. Oh my god! No. Okay. Yeah, he does have that sort of like cool guy. Like, look at this handsome boy who needs a place to sleep, and then like underneath <laughs> it, he'll like strangle you. Like, there is a a quiet rage there that I think mm. local natives has. Do you know what I mean? Whoa! I I have always said we're the most quietly rageful band in India. I rock. know. I know. I, yeah. I, wow. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Cassim, you, just, you could be a music the wrong way. writer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, music writer. You get us. You understand us. <laughs> I get you, man. I get you. Yeah. I'm um, you know, I the, think the reason you get him is because you're basically talking to yourself. All the movies he likes are what you like, all the music he likes is what you like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh Kelsey Cass we, might have a crush on you. We might I do. And and I think we should be friends outside of potting and Watch together. Out, Josh. Uh, oh, so, yeah. It's a great um, way to get that started. Yes, absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. I noticed you have a, a sense of fashion about you. What's your relationship to fashion? And is it am I looking into it too much? Because I see you and I go, there's a guy that knows how to put clothes on his body. <laughs> Colors, design. Do you know? Listen, uh, earring I, looks good. The haircut looks good. Like, you know how to put yourself together, sir. A, a, a thing more flattering you could not say. Thank you. To me. And oh. you're welcome. I am so thrilled that you think this of me. Mm-hmm. Because I like I like that. I like I like fashion stuff. I like cool clothes. Like I just I think that's like a fun way to express yourself. And uh yeah, I'm uh I don't know. I I'm d I don't feel like I'm an authority on anything. I uh I just kinda like wear things you like what I you get like excited about yeah yeah there's a clothing label called wax based out of london that i really like okay they make lots of rad shit so Googling i've been wearing now. a lot of that but I, i've been looking london. for more dangly earrings and i am very I very like happy very happy about this guy that's Just a good dangler him. yeah it really it's it like it gives a lot of movement but it's not too distracting but it's like it really just adds like just a nice vibe next to your face. Nice sparkle. I have a yep. question for you about fashion. So uh, okay. Kasim, <laughs> Kasim, Kasim recently broke up with a young lady and she stole, she took his sweater, which Jamie got him for Christmas. And we'd love to know your thoughts on this. See, I but the, what we're not, what we haven't gotten to the bottom of it, is she, did she just take it or did Kasim give it to her? Uh, there, uh, I, you can ask me that, okay? I, <laughs> right, right. I didn't give it, I, say, I didn't give it to her. Here? I didn't give it to her, but she had worn it enough to where I didn't feel comfortable saying, no, take that off, don't wear it. Because I think she was wearing it on our last. Did you ever wear it? Yes, I did, Jamie. Jamie, I cherish and love the things you get me. This was just an Clearly. awkward situation I was in. Okay. Where did you get where'd you get the sweater? It was North a North Face. Face. It was a North Face fleece. A little brand you. from London. You probably never heard of it. Oh, North, North Face. Face. Oh, but oh, N O O R T H. That's right. <laughs> and it was a noir face. No, Noir. 
Um, and so I, I, she has somehow made me feel terrible, even though I was the one that was, you know, uh, in an awkward, weird position at the time. But I, you know, I, I'm glad this can come up four or five months after and become an issue on our podcast. But yeah, did I faux pas in letting uh, my ex take the fleece or should I have asked her to leave it before she left? It sounds, it sounds like you were, you were very kind and you were very, Mm -hmm. uh, try, tried to try to be, try to have some grace about the situation. I think you're coming out on top and I think we just find a, a new North face sweater. Okay, I'm not Kaz, buying it. Kaz, let me ask you something. No, no, yeah, yeah. You have bought yes. one already. You're good. Uh, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like you're not buying it. Like you're not buying this whole thing. No, I'm not spending my money on it. She's, she's done. So, yeah, she's done. She's <laughs> done. Kaz, you can buy her <laughs> Kaz, um, let me ask you. Obviously, we know you love this the sweater that Jamie got you. Yeah. Let's say, love it, let's love say it. what she was wearing on your last encounter in the goodbye was actually like your favorite piece of clothing that she had on her back do you say something then absolutely if 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 it's okay. more mine like if if she would have took this sweat this sweater is a part of my identity i've worn it for over a decade i wear it all the time it's a good sweater it's a great Looks sweater cool. it's yeah. vintage it's 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 there's no other one like that you can't just go to a new earth face and pick one of these up off the rack Mm-mm. i would have had to been like Look, I don't want to. This is awkward for me, but I, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need you to drop the sweater. Well, yeah. uh, unless unless she was like a monster, she she would mm-hmm. know what are what are your favorite mm-hmm. things. And I'm Thank sure, you, yeah, she she would be like, no, yeah, you you keep this. Right. I can't believe unless you're I'm calling missing Sarah Weinstein a monster. My husband <laughs> won't let me wear like his favorite sweater. He would never even let me put it on. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, that's a whole other issue. I think we would. He have has to get a into. really cozy, um, like cable knit, like vintage, like cashmere open cardigan. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes like you just want to mm-hmm. wear like a, a like a looser one, like a even if I get like a bigger size women's, it's still not it doesn't have like the boxy feeling that you want like a big cozy sweater to have. And yes. I slipped it on once, and I went to be like, yeah, that's you know, like go to brunch or wherever we're going. And he's like, yeah, do you take that off right now? Wow. And he knows it's coming uh, home with him and he's still. And won. I was like, what? And he's like, you're going to get food on it. Yeah. And that's my nice sweater. You're not allowed to wear that sweater. That's I, you can't ever touch that sweater. Oh, well, Jamie, here's, here's. Something. Can you fix all of us before you leave? <laughs> the plot, the plot. Thinking, try. Jamie, because what you Why? don't know is one of the Christmas gifts that I got for Kasim is in the frame right now of his home that we're looking into and he broke it after i got it for him so maybe he maybe he just has some anger towards us that we're unaware of you can guys i guess know can it. i guess what it is sure yes yeah please. guess it is the uh newman jurassic park barbasol can no rob <laughs> doesn't the, have that's the got taste. the stuff <laughs> no no is it that rob Are there doesn't embryos have in there the taste and oh normally, my God. normally there's an action where it springs up and the little things come up, but it broke. I couldn't um, afford that. But Kelsey, all you got to do is just be my friend <laughs> and you get access to all this cool stuff. Yeah, dude. I got to see that cool can of shaving cream all the time. Every when week he could see it. Every <laughs> week. It's uh, funny Kelsey, that I did point out a thing that was broken. You did. Yeah. It's, it's almost like all my stuff funny. is broken. Oh my God, wait, this, this plot even thickens even more. I've always wanted to ask Kasim this. I've had Apple TV for, I don't know, six years or something, and my Apple TV remote works fine. When I was at Kasim's place, we tried to work the Apple TV. It didn't work. We found another remote didn't work. Another remote didn't work. Kas, what are you doing to those remotes, bud? I think I'm. I, I have like a magnetic energy that interferes with the, mm. the electrical stuff here. As you guys Breaking would probably, it. Yeah. I thought it might you might be the UFOs. And they just clank. They they bang into like mag you. like Magneto. <laughs> I thought the you had aliens. a Magneto energy. The aliens are doing it to you. Yeah. Well, that's that's a great segue, uh, James. Because before Kelsey pops off here, I do have my <laughs> sort of normal set of questions I like to ask our guests. Kelsey, I I don't know if you would please entertain me here. Um, and and just no no Eric no Eric Clapton stuff. No, no fucking. We're Eric done with that. No, uh, no, no. 
No clap. No clap. I don't listen no to clap. Clapton. Please do not <laughs> no judge me. Clap. I no. don't. I'm not a Clapton guy. Okay. I just okay. remember the Layla song and the story. That's no, it. no more. But he loves Cream. Uh, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Creed? Did you say Creed? He loves Creed. Creed. He loves Creed. Even I got to tell you, Kels, me and Rob went to a, a karaoke uh, a couple months back, and I was singing Creed at the top of my lungs. Creed. Yeah. With arms wide open. Yeah, that, that was one of many. Yeah. One of the f- five hits. He likes or, to put his foot up on stuff when he sings it, too. That's like mm-hmm. his big thing. Thank you for it noticing It brings that. that out in you. Yeah. yeah. I like to imagine that's the speaker... I don't know, Kelsey, you you have that experience that we all want, which is what is it like to rock a fucking crowd you know? <laughs> on a stage up there? Now, when you're on keyboards, it's like you got to when you're you got a guitar, you're shredding. That's a cool. But when you're on keyboards, it's a little bit of you got to. It's a little bit of this. <laughs> and then sometimes like I know you had at some point to think about how to be cool but when I watch you, and this is a coming around to a compliment, it just looks like your your body is doing whatever it has to do to make the music, and you're so into it that you're not thinking about being cool. Do you see what mm. I'm saying? That that is a good trick because because whenever you're mm. like thinking of it, I if I if I try to do something, I immediately feel like a fraud and like the biggest nerd, the dumbest guy like in the world. And like you have to, yeah, just not think of any of that and just be total like, I don't know, you're in, you're in the, you're t- just totally in the music. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's hard to rock on a keyboard. And I learned that I couldn't wear glasses or sunglasses very often because the only thing I can really do is like move my head around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and then I'd be so sweaty that my glasses would fly off. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm a contact swear now. Oh, um, I'm, I'm thinking about dabbling a little bit just just to give my uh, sort of nose bridge a break here. But yeah, context. The only thing is you can't really nap in a contact lens. You know, you got to read what about letter. LASIK. Can you do LASIK? I'm uh, I'm against the technology. I stand against it. Sorry. Anti laser. Yeah, I'm not a laser guy. Laser's wow. got a long way to go. They said I can't do it. They said you I can't, can't get oh. laser. Oh, you can't, it, you it, can't do it, LASIK. It, yeah, you have a, a certain stigmatism or something like where if they keep changing, like they need to like stay put for a while right, and then right, you can right. do it. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't I have asked a in a crazy, while though. I have crazy astigmatism. Maybe I just can't. My eyes won't take to a LASIK. So that Maybe. tracks. Um, um, Kelsey, sorry. Where, where can we find? Uh, we're going to put the link to five years down below. So you guys, please click on the link. Um, watch the new single off the new Jaws of Love album, which comes out November, November 11th. November 11th. Yeah. Um, anything else? But obviously, local natives. You guys are. You guys are still. You just finished a tour. Did yeah, I just we did a the a end big, of, of your tour. Yeah. Mm-hmm, big U.S. Uh, headline tour all of August. Uh, did a did a random festival uh, last month. And then we're 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 plotting some fun things because we're we're working up to a new album and uh, yeah I think I think stay tuned for some some fun shit coming up. Well, Kelsey, awesome. this was so cool. It's so great to, Thank to you so finally much. meet Thank you. you. Of so course, and on, and may, might I add just real quick, uh, yeah. I'm doing a Jaws of Love residency at Silver Lake Lounge. Oh, great! Every every Wednesday for free this month. Wow. Oh, wow. That's huge. So, yeah. I work out in fun. Glendale. I'm going to come out and bring some uh, some gamers. Uh, work at, out. At a, at a oh, G4. you work out in. I'm sorry. I, I, I work out that that part of town every Wednesday for free. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a bunch of great openers. And uh, and for any local natives fans, the third night, I think Matt is playing drums for his girlfriend because she's opening. And then Nick is going to do a DJ set after my set. So that'll be unofficial jaws of love local natives night cool. um but yeah uh thank you so much for having me it's so cool meeting you all thank you, you so too much for so great thank you uh so much kelsey and i will be sliding in your dms uh regularly so look forward to that hell yeah watch right. out thanks kelsey <laughs> everyone check out the, the music video yeah do not okay, <laughs> okay good to know. i'll let you buy it okay thanks kelsey <laughs> thank you that was so great. Thank you guys for indulging me. Um, I really did yeah. geek out when he joined. I'm, I'm such a fan of them. 